we are walking through the book of Genesis this month. It is the beginning of the new year, and just like Genesis is the beginning of God's word, the beginning of the Bible, that's why we're going to start the beginning of the new year with the beginning of the word. And I am posting video clips sharing some nuggets about pieces throughout Genesis. Genesis is key, the beginning of Christianity and Judaism and Muslim. I mean, all their scriptures start here. So it has been thoroughly researched, heavily published, heavily commented on. I'm not going in depth because that would take days, weeks, months, years. Volumes have been written about this. But I want to give you a nugget here and there to think about. Today, I want to take a look at Genesis 15. In this, we see God making a couple of covenants with Abram. I'm going to read from verses 5 through 18. God took Abram outside and said, look up at the sky, count the, sc the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then God said to Abram, so shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and God credited it to him as righteousness. God also said to Abram, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abram brought all these to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to Abram, Know for certain that for 400 years your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own and that they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterwards they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here, for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. When the sun had set, and darkness had fallen, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said to him, to your descendants, I give this land from the Wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. Oh, this is a beautiful piece, Genesis 15. Let me tell you about this. God gives two covenants, makes two covenants with Abram. First about his offspring. He says, you're going to have more than there are stars in the sky. And we could have read from earlier in the scripture where it says they will be your own flesh, not like adopted offspring, an adopted son that then had offspring. It will be flesh of your own flesh. And so in verse six, it says, Abram believed the Lord and he credited to him. Abram would have known before he died that this was fulfilled because either he had had offspring or he hadn't. He's going to know. But then this second covenant, the promised land, that's not going to fall to him. It will be his descendants 400 years later after they've been delivered from Egypt, where they were strangers and they were enslaved and mistreated. And as a result, Abram doesn't know he's not going to be alive then. I mean, it even says here, God says that you will uh, be buried at a good old age. He won't see it when his descendants take that promised land. So how will he know? In verse 8, sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? When Abram asked God for confirmation, God was not upset, not unhappy. But that's when we get into this next piece. Bring me a heifer, a goat, a ram. He cuts him in half. 
what's going on with this heifer, goat, and ram that he cuts in half, and then later a smoking fire pot and a blazing torch pass between them. At this time in the ancient Near East, this is a ceremony for how you would seal a covenant between two parties. When you have two parties, they're making an agreement, making this covenant. They would each take an animal, slaughter it, cut it in half, and the two parties would walk between the halves. And they're essentially saying by their actions, if I break the covenant, may what happened to these animals happen to me. It was very common, for example, for a bridal covenant, the father of the bride, which is arranging the marriage with father of the groom. The two fathers would walk between it saying, if my son, my daughter is not pure, is not holded to the marriage covenant, then may what happened to these pieces happen to me. In fact, this is alluded to, this covenant, in Jeremiah 34. Verse 18 says, those who have violated my covenant and have not fulfilled the terms of the covenant they made before me, I will treat like the calf they cut in two and then walked between its pieces. Oh, that's exactly what we're talking about. You break the covenant, may what happened to this animal happen to you. But as I say, the two parties would walk between it. In this case, in Genesis 15, God's making this covenant with Abram, but Abram doesn't walk between it. We see a smoking fire pot and a blazing torch. What's happening here? What happens is that God already knows that Abram is a sinner. God knows that Abram cannot fulfill this. He knows that he will break the covenant. If that were to happen, he would be slaughtered. So God doesn't let Abram do that. Instead, God walked between for both parties, both parties, knowing that when Abram bring, breaks that covenant, that God would have to be slaughtered for him. This is already alluding to God being slaughtered for us. Long before Jesus was sacrificed, God knew what was going to happen and agreed to it. That is pure beauty right here in Genesis 15, showing God's faithfulness and his love to be with us. Genesis 15.